Can you talk us through what a general training week looks like for you leading into the track season? So maybe not quite now, including, you know, I don't know how much info you, you know, you, you're keen to give, but whether you can give us any insights in volume, workouts, things like that. Yeah. So we're, we, we aim to keep, yeah. So we have actually a pretty similar training style to the Inga Britsons. I think that's a philosophy and a style that coach really likes and understands and I think it works for like a lot of us guys looking at it and girls looking at it now so I think yeah so in a in a classic week we usually have we'll have two double workout days they're usually double threshold days and then everything around that is mostly just higher higher volume easy running work but that's like 10s 15s 20 20ks a long run in that and those sorts of things and usually like we we usually get up to around like in peak base phase we can be anywhere between like 160 to 1 180 k a week so yeah maybe i've I've had to switch from miles to k's obviously moving to a european coach so i can't can't remember exactly what it is in miles but yes i'd say it's it's slightly different to what i was used to because i'd say this is like a very controlled training system like whereas like i'm getting getting measured every session and trying to almost keep the lactate to a level of not going too high so I can actually like stack the days the days together whereas before it was more about like okay yeah we need to get the intensity we need to hit the splits whereas now it's the focus is more on like hitting the weekly volume and and getting like the big double threshold days in for anyone that doesn't understand kilometers that's about 100 to 110 miles per week 160 to 180k so it's a big volume there George and you sort of brought me nicely onto my next question. Um, you said that it's quite uh, sl- slightly different to what you were previously doing, where you were a bit more intensity hitting splits. It's quite common that we see that in the UK way of training. I think that things are changing in the UK slowly. I think that athletes... I'm, not, I'm not. I'm also not not saying it's better at all. I think everybody's like very, very individual as an athlete. Mm. Like it's. I think for depending on the athlete you are, depending on what needs you you have. I think it's. Depend like the training systems very, very dependent. Like we all, everyone in the group, we have the same basis of system, but everybody has like little tweaks here and there to tailor on what works best for them. With you having success in the UK, um, and uh, and the way that you were training with John, which you'd done for a few years, especially through that transition of junior into senior, and then moving over to this new way of training, which obviously you know there's a lot of hype around it at the moment, and there would have been when you moved over. Was there ever a time where um? you know were you confident from the off were, were there ever sort of doubts in your head whether you would react well to this type of training um honestly i didn't i didn't really know to be honest. i was i was really intrigued because obviously i knew obviously it's very, very obvious like how successful like the inga britsons and like the norwegians are all coming through um in various endurance sports now as well so i was i was just intrigued to try it and see what see what the like the hype was all about to be honest and see if it was like really really something to get behind them and now I'm now I'm fully immersed in it like I think it took me probably over a year to fully adapt to the system and get used to the training that we were doing but but now I really feel like I enjoy it I really understand like the markers of of each training session and like really follow what what coaches say and you mentioned there that year to adapt. One of the questions I wanted to ask you was because I see a lot of forums talk about this way of training and, and how more recreational athletes or sub elite athletes can adapt it to their to their plan. Because it's not as easy as just going from, you know, wherever you were to 160 Ks a week and two mm-hmm. double threshold days. In that year period where you was adapting, what were some of the not downsides, but what were some of the the things that you you found were were tough? I, so I actually in that in that first year, especially the first like six, seven, eight months, I was picking up like little colds here and there, like little bits of sickness, like not 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 really many niggles or anything. I managed to avoid that. We had like had a good a good physio with us, so I was able to keep tabs on that. But it was more just like the energy levels in the body. I struggled with at times, and like actually, like it just took took time for me just to realize. Okay, it's like this is actually like normal now rather you think okay i can maybe get a bit of rest in here where it's just like a more of a continuous continuous program did your 
Did your diet have to change at all, George? Like the way you're fueling if you're doing big double session days? May I honestly eating so much now? <laughs> <laughs> like I, I didn't in the past. In the past, I thought I ate a lot, but like now, I just, I just don't think I can put enough away. To be honest, like the amount of training and the amount of like continuous load that we carry carry throughout training is just like a a big difference so i can't I'd say like fueling is like crazy important like we all like recovery shakes like carbohydrate drinks gels like everything you think of we're trying to like help ourselves to try and able to actually like do the be able to do the training to be honest yeah it's kind of like um well calories are fuel at the end of the day and it with exactly with your- yeah the amount of expenditure you'll get from running 160 k's, but not just 160 k's, but big double size sessions, you can you need to fuel almost the, twice. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't think it's like refueling for the just the session itself. Like I think mm. it's like the whole recovery, recovery package around it that you need to like actually remember to fuel as well and look after yourself outside of the just the the, the training. I think that's great advice george for anyone that's listening that maybe is considering dipping their toe in that side of training or that maybe they've started it already i think that that's a big part of it that maybe isn't um as so it doesn't have as much spotlight on compared to just mm-hmm. the, the way of training um yeah 